Hello everybody, in this video we're doing a quick review for the APCSP written exam and the topic we're covering is the digital divide. Let's get going. There's probably going to be only one digital divide question on the exam. The good news is that they're all pretty much the same kind of question, so if you study you have a great chance to get it. So first I'm going to go over the digital divide super quick. Here is the AP board's definition. The digital divide refers to differing access to computing devices and the internet based on socioeconomic geographic or demographic characteristics. So restated in more regular words, these are the people with lesser access to computing. Low income folks, rural folks, so this is like people who live in the country, international folks, and we're talking about people who live in countries with a lot less money than the United States. And then we're looking at demographics, so older people, people with lesser education, sometimes you'll see females included here, and sometimes you'll see this divided up along racial lines. So these are the people that are affected by the digital divide. So the first kind of question is the one where they say, here's the digital divide, and they want you to identify the effects of the digital divide. And the effects are always going to be on lower income people, rural people, elderly, lower education, or maybe females. A flip of this is they might give you an effect of the digital divide, and they might want you to identify that this is because of the digital divide, as opposed to something like you know, undecidable problems or heuristics or anything like that. So you want to be able to, given the digital divide, identify the effects, or once you see the effects, you want to know that what you're observing is because of the digital divide. The second kind of question you might get asked is how do we reduce the digital divide? And the answer always follows this principle. You're going to reduce the digital divide by increasing access to those who do not have it. The last part is really important. You have to increase access to those who do not have it, not to people who already have access. So to summarize these points, the digital divide is going to affect people who have lesser access to computers. And we're going to reduce the digital divide by increasing access to those who do not have it. All right, so on to the practice questions. One of the following is true. A, allowing students to bring their own computers to school would help reduce the digital divide. The concept we're going to use here is that we're going to decrease the digital divide by increasing access to those who do not have it. In this case, we're not increasing access to people who do not have it. So this is not true. Next one, B. Study showing that men and women use Snapchat in the same proportion is an example of digital divide. This is not true because digital divide affects you know, these people asymmetrically. So if it's affecting men and women equally, then we're not seeing an effect of the digital divide. It would have to affect them unequally to show an effect of the digital divide. C. Low-cost satellite internet services for places where internet connectivity has been unreliable could help reduce the digital divide. Yes, this is true. This is actually one of the ideas behind Starlink. This is true. This reduces the digital divide because it gives access to those who do not have it. D, online software business failing is an example of the digital divide. This isn't true as it does not really satisfy any of the principles we just went over. Next question. One of the following is not an effect of the digital divide. A, online polls underrepresent rural areas. This is true. Rural areas have less access to computers, so they are underrepresented. So this is not what we're looking for. B. Certain problems are not possible to solve in a reasonable time, so approximate solutions are used. This has nothing to do with digital divide at all. Reasonable time, undecidable problems, these are all things we need to learn for the APCSP exam. But it has nothing to do with the digital divide. So this is the answer we're looking for. But let's look at the other ones. C. Twitter opinions are overrepresentative of young and urban people. With the digital divide, we say that rural and elderly people are underrepresented. So the flip side of that is that younger and urban people are overrepresented. So this is true. And it is an effect of the digital divide. So that's not what we're looking for. D. Senior citizens are less trained to access online resources during COVID-19 and felt more isolated than young people during 2020 as a result. So we're going to say this is true. Elderly people are affected by the digital divide as they have less access to computing. So this is a true statement and is not what we're looking for. For the previous two problems, we said, here's the digital divide and we want you to identify the effects. For this problem, we're going to flip it. We're going to give you the effects and we need you to see that it's caused by the digital divide. This is something that could happen to you on the exam. So a sociologist writes a book using online data. The book is well researched, mostly correct about men, city dwellers, youth, and highly educated people but the book is very wrong about women, rural citizens, and elderly people. So, 
This right here, when you see women, rural citizens, elderly people, this should go alarm bells in your head. You should be thinking about the digital divide right away. I threw in a bunch of other answers about crowdfunding, harmful effects, undecidable problems. These are things that you need to know for the APCSP exam. But when you see rural citizens, elderly women, alarm bells in your head should just be going off and you should be thinking about the digital divide. So the answer is D. The digital divide means that online data for certain groups of people will be underrepresented and you'll have some consequences as a result. The next kind of problem concerns how you solve the digital divide. So in all my research, this is the most common type of problem that shows up in the practice exams. In this particular example, we have an individual trying to reduce the digital divide, which the AP board wants you to know is possible. So which one of these is the best? A, use Twitter to tweet helpful computer hints to those who do not know how to use computers. The principle you want to know here is we're going to reduce the digital divide by giving computing to those who do not have it. People who are using Twitter already have access to computing. So that is not what we are looking for. B, establish a free internet service for workers at New York City Financial Institution. Again, the principle is we're reducing the digital divide by giving computing to those who do not have it. In this case, people who work at New York City Financial already have it. So even though giving them free internet is good, it is not giving computing to those who do not have it. C, we're going to build internet infrastructure for rural cities in the United States. So are we giving computing to those who do not have it? Yes. What we find in the countryside is that internet cabling is just not as prevalent. So folks who live there just don't have as much internet as those who live in cities. And then we look at D, build a new skyscraper with ultra fast internet for office workers working at Amazon. The principle again, we're going to reduce the digital divide by giving computing to those who do not have it. So those who work at Amazon already have computing and that's not going to reduce the digital divide. Okay, another question related to how you solve the digital divide. In this one, we're looking at a government organization trying to reduce the digital divide, which the AP board wants you to know is possible. So which one of these does not reduce the digital divide? We are going to apply the same principle one more time. To reduce the digital divide, we're going to give computing to those who do not have it. So A, give computers to students who do not have computers. That does reduce the digital divide because it's giving computing to those who do not have it. B, give wireless hotspots to students without internet. Again, that does reduce the digital divide because we're giving computing to those who do not have it. C, post classes online so that people can see them remotely. So that does not reduce the digital divide because that does not give computing to those who do not have it. It is a good idea in general, but it's not going to reduce the digital divide. And D, hold in-person classes to train people to use online learning tools. This does reduce the digital divide. When we talk about giving computing to those who do not have it, we can talk about computers and wireless, but we can also talk about giving them computing knowledge. And D gives them computing knowledge. Next question. One of the following would be best to reduce the digital divide between young and old. We're going to use the same principle one more time. To reduce the digital divide, we're going to give access to those who do not have it. And we're going to use the same principle one more time. To reduce the digital divide, we're going to give computing to those who do not have it. So A, post TikTok videos. Right away, you should know that is not giving computing to those who do not have it. If you do not have TikTok already, you're not going to get any use from these videos, no matter how great these videos are. B, conduct free computing training sessions at retirement homes. So that does give computing to those who do not have it. And here is an example of where you have to read the question. Hopefully, the AP board will not give you one of these trick questions. But in this question, we're looking at the digital divide between young and old. So in this case, retirement homes does bridge that gap. And B is the correct answer. C, ask Google to increase community outreach wherever they have offices. This may or may not reduce digital divide but we can't be sure that it reduces the digital divide between young and old. D, give free laptops and wireless access points to rural families. This does reduce the digital divide, but here you have to read the question. They're looking for digital divide between young and old, and that does not reduce the digital divide between young and old. So it's not D. Last question, one of these is false, which? A, a for-profit company could help reduce the digital divide by offering reduced pricing to geographically remote areas. So the AP board wants you to know that a for-profit company, even one that's trying to make tons and tons of money, can still reduce digital divide. So this answer, we are giving access to those who do not have it. 
So this is an example of reducing the digital divide, so it's not false. B, a nonprofit company can help reduce the digital divide by refurbishing phones and donating them to low income areas. There are a lot of companies that do this. AP Board wants you to know that a nonprofit company can reduce the digital divide. This, in this case, does give computing to those who do not have it, which means it reduces the digital divide. So this is not false. This is not the answer we're looking for. C, a movie celebrity could eliminate the digital divide in a city by donating enough money to pay for free computers and free wireless hotspots. So the key thing is here, this does reduce the digital divide, but it does not eliminate the digital divide. You may be reducing or even eliminating the digital divide with respect to income, but you are not reducing the digital divide with respect to age or with respect to knowledge. So you're only reducing one kind of digital divide, and so this is false. So C is the answer you're looking for. And D, a for-profit company could help reduce the digital divide by paying for tutors for introductory computer science classes at schools around the state. So here, we're reducing the digital divide because we're giving knowledge to those who do not have it. We're giving computing knowledge to those who don't have it. This is actually done for real. Microsoft does this with their Teals program. All right, so that's it for the practice questions. I hope they help you out. If this was useful to you, please give the video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.